Okay, my friends, we are back. This is Reverend Jeff Jones, pastor of World Victory Church and Life Center. We are back on it with our 40 days of renewal in this Lenten season. We're going to do something fascinating today. We're about to change, we're about to change the game. You've been on the road with us for a while. You understand what we're doing. So we're going to change the game. You're going to have a revelation today. All right, so just to remind you of where we are, we are in, today is March 31st. We're going to start Psalm 126, and we're going to finish 126 on Saturday. But this is what we're going to do. Psalm 126 is so short that I can cover that in two days, tomorrow and Saturday. So what I'm going to do today is show you another way of how we look at scripture. And this is going to be fascinating because in order to understand Psalm 126, we have to understand the historical period where it was written. So I'm going to share three terms with you today, right? Uh, canonical, which I'll show you a page, canonical, chronological, you know what that means, and an epoch. And this is going to change the way you look at scripture. So let's get, let's get rolling. So you see what we're going to do for the rest of the week? Psalm 126, let's bring up the scripture. I'm going to go ahead and read that scripture. And then we are going to get in and out of here. But I want to make sure that we are all on the same page. So here we are. All right, Psalm 126. It's a psalm, a song of ascents. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dreamed. Our mouths were filled with laughter, our tongues with songs of joy. Then it was said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are filled with joy. Restore our fortunes, Lord, like streams in the Negev. Those who sow with tears will weep with songs of joy. Those who go out weeping, carrying seed to sow, will return with songs of joy carrying sheaves with them. Amen. Every time I see that word sheaves, I think about that episode of, um, what was it, um, the Andy Griffith show when Barney and the choir were singing, bringing in the sheaves. Don't judge me. I just thought of that. Okay. So here, here's what I want you to know. Okay. Psalm 126 is part of a larger group of Psalms that go from 120 to 134. And they were written at a certain period. So what I want to share with you today in terms of your, your Bible study journey, and of course, when we have face-to-face -face classes or Zoom, we'll dive into this more. But here's what you need to understand. The Bible that you're reading, we're not going to change the words, so don't, don't, don't anybody panic. But the Bible that you're reading, the one you picked up, and you see those 66 books, well, those 66 books are not in chronological order. So watch what I'm about to show you. We're about to do something really crazy. I'm going to talk about Psalm 126 and the Marvel Cinematic Universe. What? Yes, the Marvel Cinematic Universe. If you've watched any of those movies, Iron Man or Captain America, you'll know what I'm talking about. So I'm going to make an analogy for you. All right. Chronological, that is, in terms of the Bible, chronological is the order of the Bible, is the order that the books were actually written. But when we say canonical, that means canonical or just the canon means there were some rules. So the people who put the, the order of the 66 books, they debated, they looked, they said, okay, look, of these 66 books, this seems to be a pretty good order to tell the whole Bible story. So that's called canonical, right? And that's what you've been reading. So sometimes you ever notice when you're reading the Bible, you read about an event and you say, well, when did that event happen? I don't, I'm lost. What, what happened? That's because it's not in chronological order. But now we live in 2022 and there are publishers who have made attempts and who have looked at dates and when things were written and they put it in order. And that changes your whole perspective on the story. So the Bible is not just the inspired word of God, it's books that were inspired by God, but they were written at certain times. So doesn't it make sense to put the books in order by time? You ever read a novel or, or something and it seems like the, the timing is off or, or you lost some pages and so the time gets away. So chronological for the Bible is identifying the times where these stories were written and then 
you tell all those stories, you read all those books in that time frame. So why am I talking about the Marvel Cinematic Universe? Because sometimes when we talk about this Bible, the way I'm doing, it could sound like a bunch of uh, gibberish or it just goes right by you. But here's something you everyone could understand. Uh, there were 22, probably more than 22 uh, Marvel Cinematic Universe um, movies, right? So the chronological order of the movies is the order that the stories took place. But the canonical order, those are the rules, the producers, the runners of Marvel Studios said, we're gonna make this movie first, then we're gonna make this movie, then we're gonna make this movie, and we'll release them in this order. But that order wasn't the order of the story. So when you look at this list, right, this is the canonical order. The Marvel Universe, Universal Marvel Universe says, look, we've gotta, we gotta do something here. Let's go ahead and release some movies. So they released Iron Man. Iron Man was the first one of the movies released. Then came The Incredible Hulk, Iron Man 2, Thor, Captain America, the first Avenger. You can see the list. That's the order that they made and released the movies. But if you're going back, trying to find the story and trying to connect it, you're not looking for the order that they released the movies. You're looking for the order of the story. So if you have Disney Plus or however you stream, if you stream at all and you want to watch these movies, you have to go chronologically. So you have to go and, and look at these dates, my friends. Look at these dates. See, this ties to your biblical understanding if you get this concept. Look at the dates. Captain America, the first Avenger, was made in 2011. But Iron Man was done in 2008. Iron Man was released first. But that's not the order of the story. So you follow Captain America, the first Avenger. And in that one, it gives a big overview of the universe to come. And then you see Captain Marvel, Iron Man, Iron Man 2, Incredible Hulk, Thor, the Avengers, the Dark World. So if you were going to binge watch, right, if you're going to binge watch, you'd have to start with Captain America from 2011. That's what's going on in the Bible. Your Bible is written in a structured canonical order but not the orders of the stories. So we're gonna explore a little bit about that. And then the last word I want you to understand is called an epoch. Now an epoch, E-P-O-C-H. It's a fancy word just to describe a certain time period. Um, we would think of it like um, the Harlem Renaissance. We knew there was a period of time called the Harlem Renaissance, that's an epoch. Uh, if you're a baseball fan, there's what was called the dead ball era, where the ball wasn't that lively. Um, there's a revolutionary war period. These are epochs, right? They're marked by an event or development. So when you put the Bible in chronological order, there are certain things that happened. And if in a certain time frame, that becomes an epoch. And so one of the best tools you can ever have in terms of trying to figure this out on your own and not spending a lot of money is in the life application study bible right because we're just breaking this down so we'll do 126 all of it tomorrow but i want you to see the richness of how this bible is written and if you can get it in the right order and read this story oh my goodness so in the Life Application Bible, they put a timeline in the Bible, right? So, and in, and in this timeline, they'll talk about things that happen in the Bible, but also things that happen in the real world. So, for instance, this Psalm 126, we're going to be talking around 538 BC, but just here's some examples of why it's important to know the times. So, um, in the Bible timeline, I'll, I'll start with 612. So the Assyrian capital, capital of Nineveh was destroyed in 612. That's before the common era, 612, right? But in 648, horse racing was held at the first Olympic, at the 33rd Olympic Games. So these Bibles tell you what was going on in the Bible story, but so that you know that these were real events, they'll put some human, regular human events in the same uh, timeline. Uh, for instance, y'all know the book, story of Daniel, right? Daniel was taken captive in Babylon in 1605, right? But uh, in, six, in six, 605, but in 650, the soldering of iron was invented. 
So there's a timeline that gets you caught up with regular events. So you can say, oh, this Bible isn't just some, some people didn't just slap this together. They were inspired. The books were ordered through a canonical method. That's how you get those 66 in that order. But it is the chronology, man. It's the chronology. Um, you have things like the horseback postal service in the Persian, Persian Empire started in 540 BC, right? Horseback right? Babylon overthrown by Cyrus of Persia, 538. So that's important to know because when we get to Psalm 126, there's a number of Psalms and they're written out of a historical period. So let, let me, let me um, tell me to calm down if I get too hyped. Okay. So this epoch we're talking about where Psalm 126 resides is in the time period 586 BC to 332. BC. And a lot of things happen in there. A lot of uh, Bible books that you've read or you love and you're familiar with were written in this time frame. So I'm just going to flip through some of them. Uh, you remember Ezekiel? Ezekiel's story is told in that time frame um, that the Lord will be Israel's shepherd. That's in that time frame. Let's see, we got Ezekiel. Oh, Ezekiel's call or renew his renewed call as a watchman. What else do we have? Uh, oh, Israel's restoration is sure. There's so many things. If I move out of Ezekiel, there's a transition. Ezekiel, the Lord's great victory over nations. All of this is in this epoch of time called 586 to 332. Uh, oh, how about stories that you've read about the temple being restored? That's all in this same time frame. Uh, let me fast forward to some others. Uh, let me get beyond Ezekiel. The full restoration of Israel, same time frame. Let's see. Oh, 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 how about the prophet Isaiah? Things that you've heard about Isaiah, stories, people, characters, all these things happened in this epoch. In the day the king Isaiah died, I saw the Lord high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. That's all in this time frame in this epoch and when you when you latch on to this right with the right tools which we'll show you don't don't sweat that we'll show you but it adds a different level of clarity to the story let me let me flip oh there's stories in the book of daniel that are intermingled with isaiah uh ooh, it's, oh it's so rich it's so rich it's so rich oh how about second chronicles right that's a those are history books Second Chronicles, Proverbs, some certain Proverbs are uh, interspersed in here because the book of Proverbs wasn't written 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and, and, and keep counting. They were written at different times, but when the Bible was put together, it says, oh, these all sound like the same kind of stories. They're, they're Proverbs. Let's, let's gather all of those and put them in a book called Proverbs, right? There wasn't a book written, someone didn't find a book you know, with the Dead Sea Scrolls called Proverbs. They piece them together, right? So there's some Proverbs intermingled. So if you like, if you like mystery, if you like mystery, palace intrigue, uh, war stories, uh, stories of victory, um, rags to riches stories, all, all kinds of stories that you're used to watching on television or, or reading in a book, all of those same type, type stories exist in the Bible. So yeah, here's the thing. We deal with salvation. Everyone needs to be saved. But I am a pastor or a preacher who believes in, okay, now what? Can we have some fun? Can we enjoy the word of God? If we know what our eternal destiny is going to be, can we really immerse ourselves and, and be holy? Yes, but not so holy that we don't enjoy the word that's been given us. So you got Job is in here. Um, you move to some of the Psalms, it's, it's crazy. Ezra, how about Ezra? Ooh, how about Ezra and Nehemiah, right? Nehemiah wants to rebuild the temple, right? Nehemiah happens to be my favorite biblical character. But all of this is in this epoch from 587, 586 to 332 BC. So now let me, let me, now that you got how happy I am about it, Book of Esther's in here. Let me move to right before these Psalms and tell you what happened. All right, so we're doing 126, but Psalm 120 
to 134, these are all called Psalms of Ascent. Ascent, ascent, yeah, just climbing, right? Because these people were coming back from captivity and they would march their way to Jerusalem. And then it became a habit of during certain festivals, they would walk or march to the temple. So in this time period, the central place of worship was at Jerusalem, right? And the people were expected to be present there to celebrate various uh, celebrations. So they became pilgrims, this pilgrim journey. They would be walking to Jerusalem, just like Jesus, as we approached uh, the death, burial, and resurrection, he was marching steadfastly to Jerusalem. So here, these folks are walking on a pilgrimage. And so if, you, if you're going on a march, right? Think about the civil rights movement, how civil rights movement marches. Sometimes would start somewhere out in the community, but they would march to the church. Sometimes they would march from the church, but many times wherever they were, they were marching back to a church where someone would then give a message. Why do you think they were doing that? It follows the songs of ascent. So these 14, uh, 24, was it? I can't even count now, I'm so excited. 120 to 134, that's 14, right? Were songs of ascent. Right before that, Cyrus the Great, right? Cyrus the Great defeated Babylon. See, Babylon, God allowed Bab Israel to become part of the Babylonian captivity. Now here comes King Cyrus. If you like history stories, if you like palace intrigue, if you like war stories, here comes King Cyrus. He defeats Babylon and he lets the Israelites go free. So they have a 70-year journey to get back to Jerusalem where the temple needs to be restored. And so these songs or these songs of ascent, it's what they would use to encourage themselves along the way, right? It's, it's awesome. Um, it has a, obviously a connection to temple worship, right? Now, some of these are really old. Some, can't, they're really not attributed to David because David was alive long before this happened. He died long before these things happened, right? So these songs of ascent weren't necessarily about him. But the point is, once we get back to 126 tomorrow, it will make sense when you hear things like, when the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion. Well, this is what he's talking about. Cyrus frees them. He defeats the Babylonian empire and Persia becomes the dominant empire. But Cyrus has in his heart to let the people go because God knew Cyrus before he was even born. So, when, so tomorrow, when we get to 126, you know, we'll break it down, but this is the beauty of it when it's in chronological order. Cyrus frees them, and then these songs of ascent are written, and they're pilgrim songs as you're going on this journey. Oh, wait a minute. Don't we sing a song about while I'm on this pilgrim journey? I want Jesus to, what? Wait a minute, wait a minute. Don't we sing, I want Jesus to walk with me, walk with my mother? walk with me, walk with my father, walk with me while I'm on. I can't sing, don't judge me. While I'm on this pilgrim journey, I want Jesus to walk with me. So as we continue over the year, we'll talk more about chronological order versus canonical order. Epochs, a, a certain time period that this was written and all oh, it is rich. Nehemiah, Psalms, uh, you name it, right? A song of a sense. Let's go up to the steps. Let's go steadfastly to Jerusalem and let's climb the steps to the temple. Let's make sure we go to the temple on certain dates and times. Let's make sure we go to the temple. When we have a march, let's organize the march, but let's go up to the temple with our song of ascent. We'll be back tomorrow. We'll break down Psalm 126. All six verses, we'll do three three tomorrow and three on Saturday. I hope at least one of you was as, as excited as I was to know that there's a rich history in the Bible and following that path of chronological will help. And 
showing you the example of the Marvel Cinematic Universe so you could get it locked in your mind, the difference between chronological and canonical. All right, folks, we're out for today. As always, I wanna make sure I share this with you. The purpose of World Victory Church and Life Center is to help people meet God through Jesus Christ who will meet their needs in every age and stage of life. We need you, we need you to click like, if it's in Facebook, do like, do comment, especially about this chronological thing. Give us some comments. What do you think about this, right? Right? Uh, comment and share. Just click that share button. Don't debate. Just click it. And you know, when you share, you don't even, you don't even have to type comments. You can just click share. If you're going over to YouTube, make sure that you like, subscribe, click that, that notify button so you'll know when we are publishing more information and put in some comments. There you go. I'm excited. I hope you stay excited. But even through all my excitement, I know that life is difficult. And so we leave with the same benediction every time I leave you. In the words of Jesus, in this world, you shall have trials and tribulations, but be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. Go in peace. Have a great rest of the night. Remember, God loves you so very much. And so do we. Good night, my friends. Good night. Good night. Good.